So in this video, we're going to make a web page that says hello to the user and then the user is going to type their name and the web page is going to say hello back but with their name included. So it's going to take input from the user and produce output that includes uh, their name. So uh, that's going to involve making a JavaScript program. So getting JavaScript uh, along with our HTML to get that functionality happening. Um, so I'm going to make a new file here um, in Visual Studio Code and I need to save it as an HTML file so that VS Code recognize it as HTML. So I'm just going to save this on my desktop. I'm going to call it um, something like hello name, hello name .html. The important bit is the .html extension um, because if you've got that then it recognizes it as an HTML document. And what I love about VS Code, just the exclamation point and then tab and then it auto completes a boilerplate for us. Um, so we can type in here the title, just call it hello name or you can call it whatever you want to call your web page. And then getting into the actual code inside the body of our HTML document, I'm just going to type in h1 element and the heading is actually going to be the question. So I'm just going to say um, hello, um, what is your name? Uh, question mark and then so that that heading is going to be nice and big going to ask us the question then underneath that um, some input so the input tag is self closing so I don't need to have an opening and closing tag for input just that is enough to give ourselves a little box where the user can type in their name um, underneath that I want a button so just the button tag in HTML um, is all we need and then inside the HTML uh, I just type in um, what I want the button to actually say so inside the button is going to be the text submit to indicate that they click on the button once they finish typing their name so just before we go any further let's just save that and see what that looks like um, for now so I'm um, coming to our um, actual uh, web page here if we open it in the browser it looks like that <laughs> so it says hello what's your name and then there's a space to type in and then a submit button now I probably want this underneath um, so let's put a break so just a, a BR tag um, in fact maybe a couple of those um, BR is kind of like pressing enter on the keyboard to just kind of move it down a line um, and let's see if that improves it at all so refreshing the page Okay, so now it's there's um, a bit more space there, so that's nice. I think I want all of this centered. So what I will do is actually put all of this. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to do some, I'll just center everything. So I'm, I'm going to make a style tag here. Now this is mostly, this video is mostly about JavaScript, but it's a tiny bit of CSS, got to make it look a little bit good. So inside my style tags, that's where I do the styling. <coughs> so just for the body, <clears throat> the entire body um, I'm going to fancy brackets um, to tell the computer how I want to style the body and actually let's make a background color shall we make a background color of you know dark slate gray that'll do um, and let's text align center everything so um, in fact I think let's make the color of the actual text so color for the text um, oh not column count I didn't want that I wanted color so color um, for the text let's make it a nice white okay so like I said this video is not really about styling but we'll do that basic styling for now and see if that improves the look of it at all uh, there we go so it's in the center I've got a background color and the text is a you know, a, a nice-ish color. So I can type my name in here and press submit, but of course nothing is going to happen. So this is where the JavaScript comes in. So um, to include JavaScript in your HTML, uh, you could make a separate JavaScript file, but for now what we'll just do is we'll just make a, a script tag. So type in the word script, and just like a normal tag in HTML, but this is the script. So inside the two script tags, that's where we're going to write our JavaScript code. So what I want to happen is when I click this button, I want um, it to call a JavaScript function. So in other words, I want something to happen with my JavaScript when I click this button. So what I'm actually going to do this time is inside the button opening tag here is an attribute inside the opening button tag. So after the end, but before this greater than sign here, 
I'm going to type in on the event, so on, on the event of me clicking the button, I want something to happen. So autocomplete and you get the equal sign and the quotes. So inside the quotes, that's where we can have, you know, this is what I want to happen when I click the button. And what I want to happen is I want um, a function to run. So I'm just going to call it um, my function for now. So this function um, is going to run in JavaScript to sort of let the, the text editor know that it is, or to let the computer know that it's um, a function. We want these brackets, just normal brackets, opening and closing. And you see how that changes the color um, in VS Code here of the my function name, because we know now that yeah, this is a function we've got um, with these empty brackets. Um, that's uh, how we know. So coming down here to the JavaScript, um, the problem at the moment that we have is when I click the submit button, it says it's going to run a function called my function, but there isn't a function yet. So let's make one. So how do we make a function or declare a function in JavaScript? Well, funnily enough, we use the word function. So function, and we're going to declare our function and give it a name. Well, what do we want to call it? Obviously, we have to call it the same thing as we say we, we want this function to run. So it has to be the same name. So my function again spelled exactly the same way. Um, it should come up actually, you can auto complete it. Um, so the capital F there, I've camel cased it, you've got to spell it exactly the same way. So that when we click this button, it's going to look for a function by the same name in our JavaScript. And again, we need these brackets to indicate, yeah, that's a function there. Okay, so after we've declared the function, we need to actually write some code for the function uh, to uh, run. So to, if we're writing code, we use the fancy bracket. So the actual code for the function goes inside these fancy brackets. I'm going to press enter to give myself some space to write some code. And to start with, let's just test it out. I'm just going to do an alert here. So alert, and then in brackets, uh, a string, so quotes for a string. Um, and I'm just going to say testing to test out that my button is working so that when I click it, it runs this function, which has got no code inside it apart from a, an alert popping up that says testing. So let's save that and come to the browser. I'll refresh the browser to update the code. And then if I click the submit button, hey, I've got a pop up that says testing. So yeah, that means my JavaScript is working. Now I don't want that pop up. So I will delete this and we'll actually write some code in here, some, some JavaScript that I actually want. So firstly, um, one thing I need to do is I need to identify this input tag from my document, from my HTML document. That's the input. But I, I need to sort of draw on that or find it in my HTML document. But I'm not going to find it unless I give it a name. I need to call it something. So we're going to give it an ID, an identification. So ID, autocomplete, and we get equals and then the string, you know, quotes. And I can call it what I like in here. So I'm just going to call it, uh, maybe call it user input or something like that. User input. Um, right. So if I um, come down here now, what I can do is I can create a variable. Um, so I'm going to say let, so let, and I'm going to make this variable. I'll call the variable the same thing. You can actually call it whatever you like, but for me, I find it easier to call it the same thing as the name that I gave the HTML element. So let user input, we're defining this variable, we're going to call it user input, let that equal, um, and then I need to actually find this thing from my HTML document. I want this variable to equal this element from my HTML. Now when I'm defining a variable, just generally, if we haven't looked at variables too much, um, I, could, I could make this whatever I want. I could store whatever data I want to inside this variable. I could say it, it equals two or seven, or I could use quotes and call it a string. Um, you know, and this, this data, whether it's a string data or number data or whatever, can be stored inside this variable. But for now, what I want to do is I want to take this element from my HTML and store that inside this variable so that I can write some code that does something with that user input. Because <coughs> remember, ultimately, I want to actually take what they write in there and do something with it. I want to say hi and then use their name, right? So, um, all right, uh, this is in my document. So I'm going to write document, document to indicate that what I'm trying to find is from the HTML document. And then dot, and I'm going to use a method now to find something from the document. And that's, I'm querying the document really, and I'm selecting something from it. So I'm going to use query selector. That's my method to find something from the document. 
document.query selector and then in brackets I'm going to write the name of what I want to find. So because it's a string I'm putting it in quotes and then because I've given it an ID just like Instagram really if I'm trying to find something on Instagram I use hashtag right so hashtag and then whatever I've called it user input so hashtag user input and it will find it from my HTML document all right so let's put a semicolon there to end that instruction in my first line of JavaScript a semicolon says yeah I'm finished that instruction ready to move on to the next one okay and what I want to do is um, actually uh, put a message out there so I want to put a message into my HTML. Now at the moment I've got a heading, I've got the input, I've got the button, but I'm going to have a space underneath here in my HTML to actually say something. So I, I might say this in an H1 as well. You could do an H3 or um, whatever you want, but I'm just going to make an H1 in here. And inside this H1 I want some text to appear, a message to appear. Now at the moment inside this HTML, my inner HTML here between these H1s, tags is empty there's nothing there right but I want to put something into the HTML there with my JavaScript code I want this to be empty until I press the button and then when it runs the code I want it to actually fill um, the h1 with some text so once again to do that I need to actually recognize this h1 I want to give it a name because this h1 is different to my first one so I want to distinguish between them I'm going to give it a name so again the ID tag Let's call it something. I'll just call it message for now. All right, and then exactly the same process. I'm going to create a variable and then find that thing, this h1. I'm going to find it from my document. So to do that, I'm just going to copy and paste because it's basically the same, exactly the same code that I wrote before. But this time, instead of user input, we're calling it message. So this new variable I'm calling message. And that's going to, be, what I'm going to store in this variable called message is going to be this element here from my HTML. So I'm going to find it from my document, I'm going to use the query selector method, and I'm going to find this thing that's called message. So remember, I need the hashtag, don't forget the hashtag, hashtag message to find it from my document. All right, so now that I've actually defined those variables, I can actually do something with them. Okay, so um, I'm going to, um, when I click the button, it's going to run this function. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say message. Now that I've defined that variable, the computer knows what I'm talking about when I say message. It says, ah, you mean that thing, that element from your um, document, this one here, this element that I've, I've stored in this variable called message. Okay, so yes, that's what I mean. I mean that empty h1 dot, and I'm going to write something inside my HTML. So the inner HTML of this empty h1, I'm going to make it say something. And for now, I'm just going to say testing to see if it works. And then if it works, I'll actually think more about what I want to put in there. Okay, so let's test this out and see if it works. So coming to my uh, browser, I'm going to refresh the browser to update the code. And then if I press submit, hooray, it says testing. So I know that that button works and it puts something in the HTML for me. Okay, great. But I don't actually want it to say testing. Uh, what I want it to do is I want it to say welcome to my page, but I want it to use the user's actual name. So let's try this instead. Um, I'm going to say um, welcome. Uh, oh, spell it right. Welcome to my uh, web page. <laughs> you can make it say whatever you want. Um, and then I want it to say the user's name. Um, but I don't want the name to be like squished up right against the text. So I'm going to put a space bar in here. Then I'm going to close the string. Now, you notice Visual Studio Code has tried to be helpful here and give me an extra quote mark, but let's get rid of that. I need to have opening quotes and closing quotes. Doesn't matter at this stage if they're single quotes or double, um, but I want to end the, the quote there. I want to end the string there. Welcome to my web page and then a space bar um, or a space. Um, and then I want to add uh, the the user's name okay so I'm going to use the plus symbol I'm not doing maths I'm not adding anything together uh, what I'm doing is what's called concatenating so I'm I'm joining together um, two separate things so I've got the string that says welcome to my web page and then a space and then I want the user input variable that I've made up here so the user input and remember that is bringing this input box from the HTML 
um, that's what it's stored in that variable. So it's going to join those two things together. So does that mean we're finished? No, not quite. And I'll show you why. You might it not might be quite what you expect here. Let's let's save this and refresh and test it out, and you'll see what I mean. If I uh, refresh the the browser, if I go to say you know type my name in here, and then I press the button, it's actually not going to say hello to me with my name. It says welcome to my web page, and we get that space. But look at this, it's giving me a whole HTML element. Now, why is it doing that? Well, if I come back to the code, we'll see that what I've stored in this variable is the entire element, right? It's this element, this HTML element, the whole thing. Now, I don't want the whole element. What I want is what the person has typed in, what the user has actually typed into that box. And we call that the value, right? That's the value of what's actually inside this element. So if I say user input, which is that variable, and then dot value, that's what's actually going to give me whatever they type in the box. That's going to give me the string that they've actually put inside that box. So it must be user input dot value. Okay, so I'm going to save the page there and refresh and let's test it out again. So refresh the browser. Hello, what's your name? I'm going to say my name and then I press submit. And now it says, welcome to my web page and it's using my name. Great. Actually, one more thing. Let's put a comma in there. Um, let's have better grammar. <laughs> Sorry, is that a bit OCD, but there we go. Um, refresh the browser. Um, hello, what's your name? Type my name and now press submit. And when I press submit, it runs that function in JavaScript and my JavaScript code is working. So that's how we can get some input from the user and produce output with a simple JavaScript program that we put in our HTML.